The Queen's dead, old boy. Yes, she passed away, sadly. Here's a headline from the BBC. Queen Elizabeth II has died. The whole world is in mourning. And people say, Mr. Richard Thomas Medhurst, you're British. Why aren't you mourning the Queen? And I say to you, who is she? I really want to know who this woman is. And why she was just born into a ruling family and we're supposed to accept that. I, I, I really, I do not understand this concept. Now, if you support monarchy, you're a royalist. At least own it. At least come out and say, yes, I love the queen. I love King Charles. Again, who, who is this guy? I, I love King Charles. I love all of the crap they did to the whole world, right? All the, all the nasty misdeeds, massacres, genocides, occupations that the British Empire inflicted on the planet. I just want to show you who our, our new king is. Apparently, this is our new king, apparently. I don't know who makes these decisions. King Charles III. This is his first address. And mind you, he, he has a pretty good radio voice, right, as they say. I'll just play very briefly in random point. Her dedication and devotion as sovereign never wavered. Through times of change. Yes, oh boy, her dedication never wavered through times of change. So that's our new king, apparently. Uh, I want to show you all the ghouls who made it to, um, to the show. So during King Charles' proclamation, look who we have here. We have Tony Blair, the snake. We have um, Keir Starmer over here, who's, who's now heading the Labour Party. We have Boris Johnson over there. I think, I think this is Gordon Brown. I'm not sure, though. Anyway, it's just a bunch of ghouls, right? Because usually, if you get there, if you're invited to these things, and I'm not saying everyone in the room is necessarily a ghoul, but these, <laughs> this bunch certainly is. People have gone insane. Like, if you are in England, you will see the Queen literally everywhere. I just want to show you this clip over here. Look at the Queen. This is in the tube in the, in the London Underground, okay? Take a look. She's literally everywhere. They've plastered her face everywhere. And again, you, you might be thinking, well, yeah, of course she's the head of state. Who elected her the head of state? Who made this decision that she's the head of state? I certainly didn't have a say in that. Everywhere, bloody everywhere. You cannot escape it. <laughs> I, I can't tell if they're in support of the queen or against her, but this mural is really something. People have gone so crazy. People have gone so bananas over the queen. They are literally th seeing things. They're, they've literally gone nuts. Here's a headline from Metro that says that people have been spotting more queen-shaped clouds during the moment of her death. I really don't know what to say. This is just embarrassing now. This is embarrassing. It's a cloud, man. She's not a saint. She's not some godly figure. It's a cloud, dude. And the worst part is if you open your mouth, if you, if you say something... Right, like, hold on a second, I thought we're a democracy. Why, why do we have a queen? They'll shut you up. You're not allowed to say that. You, you're not allowed to say anything that makes sense because you, you will get arrested. I'm not even kidding. You have several people now that have been arrested in the UK for protesting the monarchy, right? Now, in one case, there was a bit of heckling going on. I'll show you the video in a second, but look at this headline over here. This is from Global News. Say at least three people arrested over protests following Queen's death. Okay, so this is, this is from Reuters originally. Scottish police said they have made three arrests in Edinburgh relating to breaches of the peace. Breaches of the peace. I mean, this, this sounds like something medieval, because it is medieval. This is medieval. <laughs> this is something from the 15th century. Breaches of the peace. Order! Order, silence! You've been charged with breach of the peace. Here's someone uh, heckling Prince Andrew. So he was arrested. Uh, this woman, if I'm not mistaken, was also arrested, at least heckled by police, because she's holding up a sign that says, Not my king. 
Here's a 22-year-old woman arrested after holding up this anti-monarchy placard. This is in Scotland as well, in Edinburgh, right? So, so she, she's she been charged with breach of the peace. Her, her placard reads, imperialism. Well, I think it says fuck imperialism, and then abolish monarchy. You can't talk about the queen and then ignore imperialism. This, this is a, an oxymoron. This is a juxtaposition. You can't do this. You can't do this. If you love the queen, then go ahead like an adult and own it and say, I love the queen and all of the shit that was done in, in, you know, in our name, unfortunately, and with her as the figurehead. Do you understand? The British Empire, who's the head of state? Who is our head of state? It's the queen, right? Now it's King Charles. They are the figurehead. They represent all of these things. So if you're okay with that, you also have to acknowledge Britain's disgusting colonial past. I found this very funny. The BBC, they, they posted a tweet saying, we take a look back at Queen Elizabeth II's long-standing relationship with Africa. Relationship? Relationship? What does that mean? Are you, are you talking about the massacres in Kenya or, you know, the diamonds that she wears that were stolen from Africa? What, what exactly is this relationship made of? What does it consist of, oh boy? I can tell you that the, the, the British government and the, the crown, yes, the crown take this very seriously. You know, because people think that, oh, you shouldn't say this now. And, and, and again, I'm not I'm not like I don't want to speak ill of the dead. I'm, I'm talking about the monarchy itself, not her particularly. She is the longest reigning monarch in British history. So you have to you have to focus on her and what happened when she reigned. And this is what happened. The British government began destroying documents, colonial files to hide what Britain had done in its colonies. So according to the National Archives and the Foreign Office, over 8,800 colonial era documents have been eliminated by UK authorities in former colonies. The program was named Operation Legacy. It's really what it says on the tin, Operation Legacy. Whose legacy? Whose legacy is that? It's hers. It's Queen Elizabeth. So this was in the 50s and 60s, all across the 23 British occupied countries and territories that eventually became independent after World War II. And they're listed here. Liter I mean, it's literally too much to list. But, um, you know, they told diplomats how to get rid of these files. Um, and they had a station for burning these things with the Royal Navy base in Singapore and so on. So they take this very seriously. If there's nothing to hide, why were they destroying these documents? That doesn't make sense. I want to also talk about some of the, the crown jewels, right? <laughs> because right now, while... The queen lies in state at Westminster. You know, they bring out all the crowns. The, she, has, she has four of them, if I'm not mistaken, right? And uh, one of the most important is the Kohinur. I mean, Nur is, is light in Arabic. I'm, I suppose that's where, that's the root of, of Nur. And it means, it means light. So that diamond, which you see here, that was stolen. The Great Star of Africa, that was also stolen. There's so many things. I mean, the, the, these are just a couple of examples. I literally do not have time to go through all of them with you because it, it, they are so outrageous. Just, I just want to give you an idea. The Great Star of Africa, do you know how much that, that diamond is worth? $400 million. Let me say that again. $400 million. That's one, of, one diamond. And the funny thing is, you know what the crown will say? They'll say, oh, but these were gifted. We did not steal them. They were given as gifts. And then you have to ask the question, well, who gifted these things to you? Did they have permission to gift them? Did you threaten them? Were they coerced into gifting them? And then, of course, their whole narrative falls apart. And I don't need to, of course, bring your attention to all the things that we have locked away in London in the British Museum. I mean, just one example, of course, is the Rosetta Stone, right? This is, this is crucial because it's helped archaeologists to... Uh, go through hieroglyphics and so on, right? It's very important. It's, it's just one example. I mean, the, there are so many countries that demand that we return all these things to them, the Greeks, the Egyptians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, the list is, is literally too long. You know, I think after the Louvre, the British Museum is the largest in the world, and then you have the Met in New York, and uh, of course, both of them are filled with stolen things. Now, aside from the stolen diamonds, so in addition to that, you have things like in, it, the massacres that took place in Kenya. I just want to read to you a little bit from The Guardian. They, they talk about in this article about the suppression of Kenya's Mau Mau Rebellion. 
This is a study called Britain's Gulag, and it chronicles how the British had battled this anti-colonial uprising by confining 1.5 million Kenyans to a network of detention camps and heavily patrolled villages. I mean, detention camp, uh, concentration camp, it's the same thing at this point, you know, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't take away the, the, the horrors of it. In the British and Kenyan archives, meanwhile, there are documents missing or classified. Many documents relating to the detention camps were either absent or still classified as confidential 50 years after the war. Okay, the British had torched documents before their 1963 withdrawal from Kenya. There were files about 80,000 detainees, and at a minimum, there should have been 240,000 files, but there were only a few hundred left. So, I mean, you could, you could more or less say the British destroyed 239,000 documents. <laughs> Again, when did this take place? 1963. Who was the Queen at that time? Queen Elizabeth. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, yes, I love the Queen and she's, she's our head of state and she's our monarch and she represents us. And then when, when there's disgusting shit being done by British soldiers overseas, you say, oh no, we have nothing to do with that. The Queen has nothing to do with that. How dare you? Here's some of the pi some pictures, right? I'm not sure how long I can I can show them to you because of the flagging, but here's some other lovely British crimes, right? Tri tripartite aggression against Egypt in 1956. So of course, tripartite means the Israelis, the British, and the French. They attacked Egypt. That's that's because uh, of the Suez Canal crisis in 1956. You know, Egypt was obviously occupied by the British as well in Yemen. Um, Separation of the Yemeni population from the white colonists. I mean, these, this is like a drop in the water. Uh, don't forget as well that, you know, during the so-called decolonization, what did you have? You had the British, you know, partitioning India into Pakistan um, in a British, in a totally British way. And then, of course, before that, you know, um, this is not when Queen Elizabeth was, was uh, queen uh, just yet, but... You know, right before she became queen, you had also Sykes Pico before that in 1916, 17. These are things that happened so long ago, and they're still affecting people to this day. So I think it's very unfair to just scoff at that and say, oh, I have nothing to do with that. That happened 70 years ago. I have nothing to do with that. Yes, you do. You do have something to do with it. You're enjoying the fruits of it, right? But let's focus on the queen a second. Let's go back to the queen and the, and the, and the royal family. Do you know how much money they have? The queen dropped dead just now, and she had 500 million. That, that's, that's what they tell us, right? That's what we know about. 500 million. The whole royal family, $28 billion. How do you get $28 billion without screwing over people, without committing genocide, massacres, colonialism? You, you can't do that. You think those 28 billion fell out of the sky? They got 28 billion because they rented out some, some fucking cottage in Cornwall? Are you so stupid that you believe that? Come on. Look at this map, man. This is 1920. This is the height of the British Empire. One-fifth of the planet under British rule. That's a lot of stuff stolen. That's a lot of wealth stolen, and it went into the hands of the royal family. So don't come here and pretend like she's some innocent granny. She's not. She's not. I want to play you a clip now. This is from the Indian foreign minister. Listen to what he has to say. I think a year ago, uh, there was actually a, a very serious economic study. Uh, which tried to estimate how much the British took out of India in value terms. And a very calculated math ended up, put a number of $45 trillion at today's value. You heard that? He, he said $45 trillion. That's how much um, we took from India. I, I don't need to tell you about the Industrial Revolution, of course, and then... Um, how the British, you know, the, the, you, you hear this theme always that, oh, we, we, we built railways for the Indians, like as if it was some kind of gift. No, 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 the Indians paid for that. They had to buy British-made trains. So they were screwed over 50 times, you know. I, I mean, and all this money went to not just um, banks in England, but of course part of it went to the royal family. India's share of the world economy when Britain arrived on its shores was 23%. By the time the British left, it was down to below 4%. Why? Simply because India had been governed for the benefit of Britain. In Britain's rise for 200 years was financed by its depredations in India. In fact, Britain's industrial revolution was actually premised upon the deindustrialization of India. There's no other way to put it. And I want to be very clear. Queen Elizabeth II was England's longest reigning monarch. Okay? 
since the 1950s, she's been the head of state, the Queen of England, the Queen of Jamaica, the Queen of this and that, right? The whole Commonwealth. <laughs> she never apologized for one single British crime. Never. You know, even, even if you want to make all these sorts of excuses about, oh, the, well, the money comes from the sovereign grant and, oh, well, you know, this... Uh, no, no, no. She's the head of state. She represents Britain across the planet. What, you know, why is she going and visiting every, all of these African countries? Why is she going and visit to 20 African countries? Representing me, representing the rest of, of Britons. She does that in our name, right? So she can also apologize. She, doesn't, she never did that. She never, ever did that. She refused to take this opportunity. And I think this is absolutely disgusting that people think that, oh, it's in bad taste to bring this up now. No, 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 Th this is the perfect time. This is the fucking time to bring this up. It is the time. This is the moment to bring all of this up. And this madness that you see, this propaganda, this brainwashing, like her face plastered everywhere. I mean, Jesus Christ. You know how, how they make fun of North Korea all the time? Like as if, oh, they have, you know, the, 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 the Koreans over there, they're, they're weird and they have cult of personality and it's totalitarian. What the hell is this? This is not a cult of personality. Is this not a cult of personality? Blindly worshipping some woman who is stinking rich. Her family are obscenely, grotesquely rich. Money that comes from enslaved people, from plundered lands. What madness is this? What is this madness? And then people say, oh, well, well she, only has, she only has a symbolic role. I'm, I'm sorry, man, it's not symbolic. No, once again, she represents us. She's the head of state. Every bill that goes through parliament requires royal assent. And once again, they say, oh, but it's only symbolic. Hey, do they require royal assent or do they not? Does she have to sign the damn thing? She does. And then, of course, uh, all these people that are being arrested now for protesting against the monarchy, you know why they're being arrested? Because the police have a lovely new bill that I was complaining about and many people were complaining about. And I told you about this. I reported on this a million times. And we are, of course, talking about the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Act. So police can just come up and stop you for protesting, even if you're one person, uh, because you're being a nuisance. You're making too much noise. You're... you're Dude, that's the point of a protest. Anyway, anyway, I just want to go back and say that uh, I, I think it's, it's ridiculous that people want to, to, you know, absolve the monarchy. So not just Queen Elizabeth II, but Charles, all of them. Absolve the monarchy of any responsibility. This is outrageous. This is completely outrageous. And it's, it's, it's uh, grotesquely uh, incorrect and, and historically illiterate. And uh, she never apologized, and we should not forget that. And right now, it's complete cult of personality um, and propaganda in Britain. You know, everyone at the BBC is wearing black, and it's 24-7 coverage, and the funeral hasn't even happened yet. They haven't even had the funeral. When other countries do this, people laugh at them, right? When they do this in Syria, they laugh at them. Oh, look at them. They're all mourning half as left as... Oh, oh, look, look in North Korea. And then when they, they do it in Britain, oh, the queen, the queen. You've been had. You've been had. Wake up.